to my next guest, a Tory peer, a pollster and a political analyst, uh, Lord Robert Hayward. Uh, Lord Hayward, a very good evening. How are you, my friend? I'm good, thanks. And yourself? Oh, God, you're standing in the same place. You've, you know, at least there's, you've got a loud voice, because I've been <laughs> straining to hear anybody. It, it's a sort of... that You are at the party conference. Are you having a ball, my friend? You're talking to... I'm having a great time, and you're talking to a former rugby referee, so I am used to conveying my voice over a large area of land. Good man. Um, so much I want to talk to you about, and I like your reaction to the breaking news, and I've got an opinion on this. Uh, members of the National Education Union have just voted in a snap poll to accept the Labour government's 5.5 pay rise for teachers in England. Now, tell me I'm missing the point here, but wasn't that the exact same figure they would offer under the Tories? I, th I think it was, and it's the same figure that the uh, Royal College of Nursing was offered the other day. So, yes, it is the same figure, uh, and uh, I shall be interested to see, as you will be, uh, the rationale for saying yes now, having said no, as I, I believe they said no previously. And also, I'm interested in the rationale, because I remember the last Labour government, I thought that if the doctors got 22%, then every single paymaster, well, union member, would be wanting exactly the same from, from the Labour government that they helped get elected. But, hey, what do we know, Robert? Um, can we talk about where you're at? Because... <laughs> Um, obviously, for the Tories, a disastrous election campaign, uh, uh, the worst result for however many years. Now it's all about the leadership. And just to sort of throw it out there from the point of view of viewers and people who have sent messages in, um, Badenoch was, was sort of the favourite, perceived to be early doors. Seems to have gone off on this tangent. It seems to be about culture wars. It seems to be picking fights. A lot of traditional Tories would like some of that, but doesn't seem to be talking, in many people's opinions, about the things that really seem to matter to people, which Jenrick is, of course, immigration, a strong military, strong borders, crime on the streets, more police. Then you've got these two in the middle, because they're the left and the right. Then you've got sort of Cleverly and Tuganat, who, who sort of talk about what was before and maintaining Rwanda, and I was the security minister. For you... Does the Tory party need to find its identity, back somebody like Jenrick, go out on a limb, get back those disillusioned voters who went to reform and take the fight to Labour? No, I don't think it's as simple as that. One, I'm not sure that Kemi was actually the favourite. Um, may have been well promoted, but it's been unclear throughout the contest as to who was going to make the final two and therefore who was going to win thereafter. And certainly, if you look at the polling, as I sadly do too much, <laughs> we're not just talking about people who went to reform. There's a whole block of people who didn't vote. Mm. There's a whole block of people who went to vote for Labour. And we have to remember that reform only won five seats off the Conservatives. The Liberal Democrats won 60 seats off the Conservatives in round terms. So the difficulty for all political parties for the next few years will be that we are no longer in a two-party system. We're in a multi-party system and going off and appealing to one group will almost certainly alienate another. No, no, I, I get... I get much better. I get that, but isn't... Wouldn't it be a fair criticism of the Tories that the, the sort of one nation down the middle... Hear me out here, it won't be as good an analogy as yours, which is trying to please all the people all the time, ends up, setting up, ends up upsetting too many people. Doesn't it need, the Tory party, a direction and a conviction politician is, I guess, what I'm trying to say to you? No, I think the polls actually, it's not a question of one nation or whatever. The Conservative Party, all the polling evidence shows that the Conservative Party lost the last election because they'd lost the reputation of competence. Yeah. And, it, and I've just been at a presentation with uh, Ipsos discussing their figures. And it's competence and employment 
and the NHS were the three major deciding factors as to people leaving the party. Right. It wasn't because they were left or right. It was primarily competence on one or two issues, and then they decided where they'd go thereafter. What are the polls saying, then? There's four of them attempting to get down to the last two. They'll all be speaking at the Tory party conference this week. Robert Jenrick, of course, Kemi Badenoch, uh, James Cleverly, uh, and also Tom Tuganat. What, what, what's the word on the street, Robert? What, what, how do you see this going, in your well, mind? Well, you just have to remember that the polls, national voting intention polls at the general election were way out. Mm. So when you're trying to find the views of a small group of pe people, i.e. the Tory party membership, within a national population, if they can't get the national population right, they're certainly not going to get the Tory membership right. My instinct is at the moment it is too close to call in all four directions. I don't know which two will get to the final to, to party membership. The only thing I would say is I think it's improbable that both James Cleverley and Tom, um, Tom Tugendhat will both be in the final, either of them, sorry, that both of them would be in the final two. One of them might be in the final two, but not both of them. Other than that, the combination final two, I don't know. It's interesting, if you go back to how Cameron, I remember him rolling up his sleeves, no notes, and he came from absolutely nowhere to win that election when he won it in the early 2000s. And you're probably Probably, you're probably r very right in what you're saying. Do you believe that the Tory party, you look at the start that Labour has had, Robert, I mean, it, I think even, even Labour's die-hard supporters would be amazed at the appalling optics of the last six weeks, eight weeks, although the start was OK, but, but it, it, shooting yourself in the foot on almost an hourly basis, you know, ignoring, justifying whatever, um, it is crying out for an opposition. Do you believe the Tory party? I mean, Jenrick said you'll die if you don't leave the East HR as a political party. Do you believe that the Tories can ever be as relevant again as they were? Yes, they can, if they unite and get a coherent message. You're absolutely right about the Labour Party. Uh, they're not only in this country, has there, as far as I can find, no government has ever fallen so fast after coming into office. But I'm actually currently looking to see whether there's anywhere in the Western world where an, a, a, a governing party has been in such a precipitate decline. No, I don't believe that you can say that the Tory party will not survive if this or whatever. After all said and done, in 2019, there was active discussion as to whether the Labour Party yep. was going to survive. Completely How long would right. it take it to come back and all that sort of thing. Completely. But the Labour Party have just made a mess. And there's no question, the atmosphere at this conference is far better than I expected it to be. And interestingly, our, our correspondents have told us that the atmosphere there is, is surprisingly a lot better than a rather flat and demoralised uh, feeling at last week's Labour Party conference. Um, do you think that, that um, reform, I mean, it did, a lot of Tories have just gone far right, and I, and I will take issue with anybody. I, I was brought up by two vo Conservative voting parents. Uh, in the end of his life, he was appalled by what the Tory party had done. Uh, and I remember talking to the old man before he passed, and he said, reforms being labelled far right by certain Tories, they're missing the point. That's a party talking about the things that I, as a true Conservative for 87 years, voted for. And, and I believe, and you're going to tell me I'm wrong, is a conversation with reform down the line not something the Tory party absolutely is going to have to consider if it ever wants to get back no, into power? The Tory party, has, the Tory, all the political parties have to look at the political um, outlook as it is in general. Right. And they have to make a judgment. The Labour Party are actually looking at reform at the moment and feeling very worried because Nigel Farage has said they're turning their guns on the Labour Party. If you look at the figures as to where reform were close in terms of second places, etc., the Labour Party have a large amount of problems in the Midlands, where we are here, and in the north of England, no question about it. So all the political parties have to look at a very broad spectrum and decide how they're going to deal with the issues that are in front of them. But for the Tory party, 
The first thing is to convince people, A, that they're united, and B, that they are vaguely competent. Now, that's difficult in opposition because you're not tested yeah. as to whether you're competent. But those are the two key things that cost the Tory party a lot. They didn't cost the Tory party the election, but they cost the Tory party a lot at the election. Now, I know you won't answer me this, but it's a pleasure to always have you on. Who would you like to see as the next leader of the Tory party, Lord Robert Hayward? <laughs> As a commentator and an analyst, the one thing I studiously avoid is ever saying who I would support, because if I do say, then any of the candidates will say, oh, he would say that, wouldn't he? Uh, I hope I've given you and give other people to whom I speak a fair analysis of the yeah. range of options, and I will continue to do so, and my vote will be secret when it comes to my house. Good man, I really do appreciate you joining us, Lord Robert Haywood, Tory peer, pollster and political analyst.